mentality of envy. I don't know what is envy. Because Nigerians, you could they go America or like at the back of your back of your house. Then person go Congo, Ghana, you could be jealous. Why would you go to Ghana? Why would you go to Ghana? But poor have to act rich just to be treated like human beings. You have to pretend to be rich. You have to pack it just so that people can treat you like Hey Mrs. Francis. Hey, Mrs. Francis. Hey, fam! Look who is gonna make it to 2022! Woo! <laughs> My baby is shouting! <laughs> look who is going to make it to 2022! Like, tomorrow is 2022! So, look who made it! Look who made it! <laughs> welcome back welcome to my channel thank you for tuning in if you're tuning in for the first time where have you been you've been missing you've been missing you know great content um thank you all for tuning in sorry my baby what do you want you distracted me thank you for tuning in thank you so much i'm so happy that we all made it another year um yeah i'm going to give my vote of thanks at the end of this video but i want to talk about this i was thinking of doing a live video to talk about this but i don't know i feel like tomorrow is new year so people might be busy i don't even know if i'm going to have time to watch this video that i'm even filming right now so i'm like okay let me just film if he, if he flies it flies if it doesn't fly no shaking so um it's basically about the way we nigerians behave um it's quite disturbing that we are not i don't know where to start from okay so it seems like Nigerians abroad do not want Nigerians in Nigeria to move abroad. So I'm going to, I don't know if it's an African thing, but I am Nigerian, so I know about my country. Sorry, any noise you're hearing is from my son. I'm so sorry, you guys. So um, I know about Nigeria. I don't know if it's, I think it's a black thing. I think it's an African thing, but I'm going to talk about the one that I am very sure of, which is um, Nigeria. So you you have a friend in the US and you call this person to say that oh um my daughter wants to come home. my daughter wants to come to the US you know Nigeria is not working for her and this is somebody that at some point you were of help to when the person was in Nigeria you were you know even if you were not of help to the person the next thing you will hear this Nigerian say is eh ha Ah, US is not what it used to be again. Oh, just they had to stay there. Oh, she should not come. Oh, the US is not what it used to be. Oh, the UK is not what it used to be. So, ah, then people don't understand. I'm not telling people not to come. People don't understand. If it's that bad, why are you still there? Why have you not made arrangements to come back to Nigeria? You're not home making plans. You're just there telling people that it's bad. Why is it, why are you still there? Don't you like yourself? Don't you want a better life for yourself? Even on here on this channel, I've gotten such a comment from somebody that said when I talked about how it was difficult for me to get a house, somebody commented and said that when we tell you guys not to come, uh, you guys don't listen. So we now leave you guys to come and experience it for yourself. And I'm I'm yet to understand. Or I have a question. That question that I want to ask now, be say, is it that? Nigeria is better than these first world countries is that living in Nigeria is more I don't know is better is it better to stay back in Nigeria than to move to these first world countries or is it that we the black because I believe that we black people will have this mentality of oh I don't want this person to be richer than me I want to be the only successful one I want only my children to be abroad this person's child should not come abroad you know because um in this same abroad you know, this same Obodo Yibo now, there are, you know, Asians, you know, you see a lot of Pakistanese people, Indians, and they are so successful. They bring in their families from their countries. They live, sometimes you see a whole family living together. They're splitting the bills and you see them in every sector successful when it comes to Sorry, I, I've got heartburn, um, so it's disturbing me. So when it comes to the medical field, you see them doing so well. 
when it comes to the educational sectors, you see a lot of them as professors, lecturers, when it comes to business, when it comes to like every single sector, you see them blossoming, you see an entire street and one family has bought all the houses on that street, you, you don't see them on social media, you don't see them on YouTube saying don't come abroad or oh, abroad not bien. you know you, you don't see them do that you see them encouraging people encouraging themselves and doing so well the ones that are our own they different like why is it that when you when somebody wants to come you guys act like I remember like I mean I mean it's not like um the abroad is hundred percent good is blameless no of course now humans did the system so the error good day and all of that but are you trying to say because i'm going to tell you one of some of the realities or some of the difficulties of living in nigeria especially as a nigerian if you have any foreigner living in nigeria life is even easier for you than we nigerians living in nigeria i'm going to tell you some of the realities some of the harsh realities of what it takes to be a nigerian living in nigeria so i want to know at the end of this video if after all the things I'm going to mention, if at the end of the day it's still best to live in Nigeria than to live in these first world countries, why is it? Because there was a post on uh, on Instagram that trended not too long ago where a Nigerian in Canada tweeted something. He said something very funny about oh he wishes that the, the Canadian government can close the borders and stop this immigration thing i mean he doesn't want more people in the country and i'm like if they had closed the borders would you have found yourself there like why do we have that mentality of only me one more succeed or you know even when because i feel like when somebody relocates from one country to another and um, especially when you have family in that country all they need to do is you know help and support you but no when it comes to our people we don't even support ourselves when people come, I mean, I have a friend that moved into the UK, uh, I think last year, and you know, she has family, but family for where they'll be family, oh, we're family, oh, we support each other. But they know that moving in here, you spent a lot of money, you need all the support that you, you can get, they don't support you. It was even her friend and the husband, they're also Nigerians, that supported her. When she came, they, gave, they brought four liters of all the Nigerian soups, Use. they were shopping for her groceries for her up to tissue you know everything in the house they were always before it to finish they brought another one when she got the house they you know they gave her some money when she moved in that, that initial stage her laptop crashed she needed the laptop they got her a new laptop i mean we are all product of help at some point somebody has helped you to be where you are today at some point somebody has supported you to climb to where you are today so what does it take you i mean they got her a good job now they're even the ones reaping like she's now spoiling them in return because they made her settling really easy whereas family did their family would not do nothing for you because they're probably not happy that you're around i don't even get it i really need somebody to explain it to me now i know that if you have lived in all these first world countries some of you are fed up some of you are tired some of you want to return to the motherland some of you want to i mean i used to be a very patriotic um, nigerian i would say that i would i can never live anywhere else of course i'm going to go back to my country nigeria is my home probably after my studies i'll pack my things and go back to my country you know um i used to be that person that used to say I don't feel it for any other country. Like I can go for vacation. But Nigeria has a way of frustrating you. Nigeria has a way of killing your dreams. At 27, 28, you don't even know what to do with your life. In Nigeria, you can't even figure out whether well, I mean you go learn carpentry or maybe you go be mechanic or maybe you go learn tailoring. Because I remember that very recently, um, my 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 set. In uni, somebody added all of us on WhatsApp and you know, put it in a WhatsApp group, all my friends from uni long ago. And somebody now said, Oh, let's introduce ourselves again and what we do now so that we can probably patronize each other. And it was crazy, like only one person or so is actually practicing quantities of vein. One say eh, I belong, I'm a language ambassador. One say I sell jewelry. One say I'm into electronics in Cameroon. One say uh, I'm into bridals. I sell bridal um, wedding gowns and accessories. One say you know I'm into tailoring. Like you go to uni because 
um, in Nigeria, you don't really, it's not like here, you don't, for you to get like good jobs or get into a good working system, you need to really go to uni. So we go, we go to uni so that we can come out and get a good job and start your life, you know. But in Nigeria, you go to uni, you come out, you serve the nation for one year and you see the federal government telling you that, oh, graduates, there is nothing for you, find your way, you know. So you come out of school after six years and you're thinking, what should I do with my life at this point? 30 years old, you deal with your papa for your papa house. 30 years old, you're still thinking. 30 years old, you can't even afford data. You can't afford... And then you try to be innovative. The country will still help support your dreams. You try to start a business that will still try to frustrate the business. You, you are in a country where... I mean, this is not me bashing Nigeria. This is me sharing the realities of living in Nigeria. I don't know if you guys follow up, but there has been a lot of security issues in the country lately. Now, let me dance now with my picking. It has never happened in Nigeria. Have you ever heard me say I'm home alone in Nigeria? I can never be home alone because I did fear. Upon suddenly leave for town, for Abuja, where I have all the security that I need. We even have soldiers and even more poles that patrol around my estate and all of that, but yet I still fear because you hear how bandits go into a certain estate to kill people at night or they go into one village, they go kill people. You cannot go on road trips because you are scared of a lot of things. Like traveling in Nigeria is a matter of life and death. It's either you come out alive, dead or in the hospital. You know, you want to travel just in I, I crazy me I do road trip for Nigeria. Am I am I am I drunk? Me road trip never. And flight tickets are not even cheap. My aunt was kidnapped last year. My auntie and my uncle they were traveling. My uncle was getting married. They reached Edo State and so bandits hold them or kidnap them for days inside the bush. Rain. <laughs> oh God! Like we had to pay ransom. Do you understand? So. So the insecurity, you know, they go into a village, wipe out the entire village at night and you see that, oh, 300 people are dead in the morning. Somebody said something on TV um, a few weeks ago. He said that the number of people that die on a daily basis in Nigeria is more than the number of people that die, that died during the war. Because there's lots of, there are lots of, you know, issues that would have been avoided, but negligence. I mean, it's just a whole lot. Is it the poverty? Is it the evil? What we say, you know, if you drink, drink with your friends, you want to go and pee, you hold your butt. Is it the fact that people are envying you and trying to kill you? There was this girl that went swimming with two of her friends, and she was like, "Let's go, let's enter the pool now." They said, "No, you go. We're, come, we're, we're going to join you." She got, she got into the pool. She came out later tied her towel, went to sit down with her friends and she tried to pick her drink to drink and one man now came and stopped her. She now harassed the man. Why is the man stopping her? She was really angry. angry. So the man told her that her friends had poisoned her drink. She was still defending her friends. She was saying it's not possible. It's a lie. The man said, okay, ask them to drink it. That was when they now confessed that oh, I'm having serious heartburn. It's so serious. Now said now confess that eh, um, three of them have been single. Now she wants to get married, and that's why they they, they wanted to poison her and kill her because she won't marry. You want to go abroad, you are scared to tell somebody. You are pregnant, you are scared. You can't even throw away your baby's diaper successfully because you don't even know whether they will use the diaper do juju, whether they will use that. You know, I don't even believe in most of all of the most of these things. You know, I'm not even that kind of person. I remember when I was pregnant with Jamal, and you know, people were really telling me, "Why would I be sharing the pregnancy on social media?" Don't tell me. You know, you're getting married. You're, you are praying. You have pain in your body. You have bitter cola in your mouth. Can I hear what, sir? Thank you, baby. You have Dracula in your mouth. So is it the evil? Is it the bad government? Is it the fact that a lot of things can be avoided, but they're not avoided? For example, I was saying that if I want to travel here, I know they even pray for Johnny Messes. It's not because... Uh, it's just that in Nigeria, you want to travel. Apart from the fact that you're scared that they might kidnap you on the road, the car can spoil on the road. You, you know, reach to the next day. You sleep... To the next day, you sleep for car. In the morning, they'll be looking for mechanic. Because they don't check the cars. The cars are not sound. You know, the driver might drink. Some drivers drink before they get on the steering. Then they start to feel sleepy. Before, you know, car don't stop myself. Enter a river. There are so many things. The roads are so terrible. And that's why it's hard to maintain cars. 
that's why it's hard to maintain cars because the roads are always destroying the cars and the buses you know so there are lots of things in nigeria people who even people learn driving here now before you drive you have to go through a process a, a very tedious process as a matter of fact but in nigeria anybody if you drive i can just teach you how to drive no 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 you don't carry a car you don't carry road. like anybody if you drive children of 14 years in abuja they drive cars do you understand like and things because of such things, accidents they happen. You know, in Nigeria they don't control the speed. It's not like here if you speed, nobody will even talk to you. The next thing you don't see bill for your house. So all these things have been minimized. It's not like the accident cannot happen here, but it's been minimized to the barest minimum that you 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 know to an extent you have confidence. You're not really thinking that oh traveling is really 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 smooth here. It's not a matter of life and death. It's not a life and death matter. You know, in Nigeria, a person they drive in picking they for staring with them. Picking go sit down for the same car, the same place where the driver is down. The driver is holding a child. But here, your picking as they um car seat, you know, a, a child cannot be standing at the back of the car and the car is moving, you know. So some things have been really, really well managed. I remember a subscriber of mine, shout out to you if you are watching. Um, she moved, she's been living in the UK all her life. I think she was, yeah, she was born here. And then she moved back to Africa. Um, I think, was it 2019, maybe 2020? So, once she, anytime any of my subscribers moved to Africa, they used to reach out to me because you guys know that I used to show you guys around Nigeria. And yes, I love Nigeria so much. So, when she, she moved, she was really, really happy. And then when I wanted to make my own move to the UK, she was like, nah, nah, not the UK. The UK, like she was really, really discouraging, not really discouraging me, but yeah, discouraging me sort of like, no, don't do that, don't, don't move to the UK. <laughs> but she did not understand my frustration. She didn't understand the fact that I was living in fear. I wasn't happy. I was, you know, I mean, I just needed a break out of Nigeria for a bit. Like I said, I'm going to move back to my country, you know, very soon. But I just needed that break. She kept discouraging me. One year later, you know, she's been living in Nigeria for over a year now, and she's like, I think you need to leave. Like, no, you need to, you need to. She now knows the reality because she cannot understand the realities of both parts of the world until you've lived in both parts of the world. People, people, they abroad, yeah, they complain. Oh, they want to go back to Africa because you know sometimes if you did heaven, if you never enter a fire, you know, no say you they you know go no sin a heaven. They they complain say they too they sing praises for this heaven. I beg my throat they scratch me. Ah, this heaven save. They too they you know until you enter where fire go burn you. You can't no say I'm on a heaven. I've been there. Oh. You know you don't understand the struggles of both parts of the world until you've lived in both parts of the world and i'm not even saying that oh abroad is 100 percent better than nigeria but allow people make decisions for themselves right now as i move come here at this at the same point some people are moving back to africa because our lives are different our journeys are different so you can't be telling me that oh i made a wrong move by moving back to africa or i made a wrong move by moving to the us or to the uk we all have different journeys nigeria favors some people nigeria does not favor some people abroad does not favor some people abroad favors some people we're all different our destinies our journeys are all different don't be the one to discourage people from coming i have subscribers that want to come to nigeria you guys know they send me emails every single time and i encourage them I, and if it's not the right time i tell them oh nigeria is not safe at this time i don't think it's the right time to come however if you think you really need to come see how to go about it i don't say don't come oh nigeria is bad oh oh nigeria no no and again a lot of nigerians have a very warped idea of what success is so most nigerians if you don't have 80 houses 72 cars you're not successful so why are you going abroad there's money in nigeria there's money in nigeria so my fault is not with money would they really find somebody like me i value my peace of mind more than money i'm not even playing with you my peace of mind oh jesus i value and pass money oh sorry sweetheart sorry 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 this boy you're such a baby boy so strong <laughs> 
I value my peace of mind. Some people, all they just want is a peaceful place, less drama, good health care, security basics of life, electricity, data, and every other thing when follow an ajara. But the basics say, oh, they feel just get good health care at any point in time. Oh, their kids feed they good schools and they don't have to pay through their nose. Because for Nigeria, you want your kid won't really go very good school. You know how much you're going to spend. You know, some people that's all that they want and they are okay. Not like they will not be they will not, you know, achieve more in life, but that the basics first, the basics go the the basics of life is all is enough for them first of all. And it's not really about money. You know, evil they happen for Ninja. There was a time, I think 2019, where what was in vogue. I'm sorry, this is not me, you know, bashing my country or anything. I'm just stating facts. 2019, what was it? What was um, the order of the day in Abuja was that they, were, they used to cut men's reproductive organs and, you know, they cut some of the boys that used to do it and they used to sell it for 150,000 naira to some politicians in Kogi State. So you kill somebody, cut off the person's organ, reproductive organ, just because of 150,000. You know, see the one where recently a couple in Ogun State um, sold their one month old baby for 50,000 naira. Did you guys see that? You know, a place where people are just looking for money, poverty don't chop deep into the system, the government. Uh, Nobody speaks for the poor. They do answers, answers. They were supposed to be doing end police brutality. But no, police only disturb them rich people. Police will heal you, you will give them smarter. But SARS <laughs> is a place where, according to Shion, the poor have to act rich just to be treated like human beings. You have to pretend to be rich. You have to package just so that people can treat you like human beings. Like a human being. I mean, there's a lot. Is it the food that people cannot afford anymore? Is it businesses that are closing down? Businesses close down all over the world. Businesses shut down. But in Nigeria, based on, based on economic what recession and everything going on businesses cannot continue people cannot feed everybody they find money anybody that calls you your heart is cutting because they want to beg you for money and they're not going to be able to pay back because they don't have it it's not like they don't want to pay they don't even have um somebody said something that if you take everybody in nigeria to the uk and move everybody in the uk to nigeria that nigeria will be like the uk and the uk will be like nigeria Jagala, Jagala, before they go, before you know, they don't spoil the door of the train, they don't use train, go on, go on one chair, before you know, one chair don't break inside like train, no maintenance. You guys know how I was into tourism in, in Nigeria to an extent, and you see how abandoned most tourist sites used to be. You see how the level of negligence, the level of death that happens because you see how they treat doctors. Doctors don't even earn nothing. And they work, work, work so hard. Then there's a country where the system works. Everything is in place and you don't want to support somebody to come. I don't come to this country. How many months ago? I know how many people I support on a daily basis. It's not like you must even support them with money. You don't owe anybody anything, right? Whether you're your family member or not. Nobody is entitled to nothing from you. But that is information sincerity oh this is how it is this is how it's done here okay have you arrived okay what do you what's the plan have you done this have you done that this is what you have to do once you arrive this is what you you know i know since i i, I mentioned that i've been in the uk i know how many emails i receive how many dms i receive of people that are processing their own and i tell them all that i know you know <clears throat> but people nigerians here mba, don't come home the uk is not good though there are no jobs maybe you should come next day oh there are you know i mean i have people coming into the uk from malaysia from qatar from from kenya from ghana and they reach out to me and i show the support that i can show and i tell the truth based off of my little experience here so far let's do better it's sweeter when everybody get money it's sweeter when everybody is successful it's sweeter when you're not just the only one that people are looking up to. 
let's stop that whole mentality of envy. I don't know what is envy. Because Nigerians, you could they go America or like at the back of your back of your house. Then let's go Congo, Ghana. You could be jealous. Why would you go to Ghana? Why would you go to Ghana? Why are we doing like this? Like who did this to us? Yeah, I'm I'm sharing this because we're, we're going into a new year. Change your ways, though. Nothing did this life. Change your ways. I can imagine my family member coming into the UK or my friend. I'll carry the matter on my head. I will know what but I know what it means to make that move. I will carry the matter for head. Oh, I will support you. People, well, people are different, and it's it's, it's up to them. Um, I want to use this opportunity also. I mean, I have a lot more to say, but this video is going to be too long. So, I want to thank every single one that has stayed with me all through my YouTube journey, all through the good times, the bad times, the breaks, the struggles. There are people that are just with me. They're holding my back like eczema. According to Rivori Picking, they're always watching anything that I put out, always supporting me. Once I announced that I was in the UK, Oh, my family out here my family on here on youtube you know i got lots of emails oh if you need anything help um reach out to me or oh, i live in bristol what do you need i mean you guys are amazing I just want to thank you for sticking around with me even when i'm not you know at my best you guys are always there to cheer me on i appreciate you i'm happy that we're all going into the new year together and this year you know i hope that it's better for us this year 2022 this platform you know we're going to go places um and i pray that you guys will keep being with me and you guys will keep you know doing well in your own businesses your own jobs your families everything will go on well for you just because of the love that you've shown me i love you guys i'm so grateful for all of you i'm thankful i'm so grateful i'm going to see you guys next year all right take care of you bye